Everyone, welcome to this new episode of Caroline Talks. I'm your host, Caroline Heist, film critic and journalist. And today is one of my interviews for the TIFF, for the Toronto International Film Festival 2023. And today I'm joined by the director, Nabin Suba, to talk about his film, A Road to a Village, which had its for premiere here at TIFF. And today I am joined by the lead actors. And I do not want to butcher your names. So I will ask you to say your names yourselves so that I don't, because I always I'm always very careful to make sure I pronounce people's names correctly. So um, I'll have them introduce themselves and we'll talk about this film, A Road to a Village, about I think consumer um, consumerism, globalization, <laughs> gentrification, and the dangers of capitalism. And I'm very interested and I'm very excited to talk about this film because as I told you at the beginning, I'm from Barbados. Uh -huh, I'm okay. from the Caribbean. So we kind of have like psych uh, similar things with how mm -hmm. globalization and consumerism and Western capitalization has affected, um, I guess you could say, indigenous communities. So I'm very interested to talk to all three of you about it. And today we're joined by our interpreter, Minso. And uh, thank you so much for joining us and doing this for me. Thank you. Um, so as again, can you um, just introduce yourselves and say your names at the beginning, please? Madaya uh, Angre, actor. I'm Nadin Suba, director. I'm Pashuvati Rai, I'm actor. <laughs> thank you. Um, so. They play the actually the, the lead characters in the film, and they're the husband and wife of a little boy called um, Bene, um, Bindre. Bindre. I had it in my head <laughs> and I hesitated. Bindre. And Bindre is very interesting because he's very influenced by capitalism, but he doesn't know that it's capitalism. He just knows he wants to wear shades, mm -hmm. he wants to be on TV, mm -hmm. and he wants to be the boss. Yeah. And I think this film is very interesting where all of the characters are struggling with dominance. Mm -hmm. and struggling with um, power dynamics. Yeah. So I want you first to talk, I'm going to begin to talk about your, about being a director, because as a director, you also have, have a power dynamic mm -hmm. on your set. So talk about making a film mm -hmm. about power dynamics as a director, because you're kind of like putting your own story, your mm -hmm. own way of looking at the world into this film. Mm -hmm. uh, my working style is a little different, mm -hmm. uh, as you know, you can ask them to because I uh, I usually you know uh, like to collaborate more uh, but uh, before you know collaborations I, I like to say that this is the idea mm -hmm. and uh, if you have any input or you know if you have any questions or you know if you have a better idea than this mm -hmm. so we can incorporate in the you know in the film so uh, uh, in this uh, Film also we have like a, we have very long pre-productions and uh, most of the cast and crew the cast uh, is uh, yeah Daya is a very popular Nepali actor uh, she is also a very known actress uh, she works in theater and films too so uh, but the uh, crew most of the crew are very they, they were working a very fast time, so mm. we have very long uh, pre-production phases. So we, like, uh, first we uh, try to understand the Rai community. I'm not, I, I don't belong to Rai community, mm. but the issue, uh, the film is on Rai community. So uh, the other also, the other uh, uh, crew also have to know about the Rai, how mm. they think, how what is their philosophy you know how they take anything uh, that you know how their worldview is so it took us quite long mm -hmm. to understand this thing like very basic thing like uh, uh, they don't understand uh, they don't uh, you know distinguish, distinguish uh, like a blue and green 
Ah, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, something like that. So we found out that <laughs> and a lot of things like uh, uh, language also, you know, we use uh, for non-Nepali speakers, mm -hmm. it could be a uh, same, you know, but uh, who speaks Nepali, they can understand the difference between the Nepali language and what the language we use. Uh, we try to, like, uh, we uh, resource and find out that because Nepali is, we use Nepali, mm -hmm. but Nepali is second language for our people. So how we, how they, you know, uh, construct the grammar. Mm. So we, we try to, you know, understand the right grammar first. Right. Also have a 27, more than 27, right? 29. 29 languages, yeah. their own, uh, the community. And, you know, uh, we worked on Bantawa. Bantawa, uh, they have a full dialect. Mm. in between that ba Bantao language. So uh, we consulted a linguist and, you know, and they have suggested us that, you know, uh, the, they use the second language, uh, translating the first language. So all the process was quite, <laughs> you know, so it, it was quite long. So, yeah, and, you know, uh, because, yeah, <laughs> so for me I, I, I'm not a linguist so mm. I have to you know ask a linguist to come yeah or you know uh, even you know when we <laughs> develop a character so when we developed uh, my last character uh, we work with him mm. because he's a weaver so first it was quite difficult to find find the you know, uh, the body language, the rhythm, and, uh, you know, uh, this thing. So we worked together and, you know, we found out uh, not only, you know, uh, director and actor, but the costume designer also came in and, you know, so uh, that way uh, we constructed the minor. Mm -hmm. And uh, like uh, the Bendra, you, 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 you know, the, he's very like, stubborn kind of, you know, uh, character, but uh, he's from a village. They are from city. Mm. So when we cast it, and <laughs> we we needed to create a chemistry with mm -hmm. uh, family chemistry. So we brought them together uh, before 15 days, and you know, uh, before that uh, we have a uh, workshop, very long workshop with the children. They are all from a village. So uh, we get uh, Benry and them together to stay in one house, cook themselves and you know, get to know each other. And other thing is that like uh, they are from city, so basically they have a, uh, some connections with the uh, village, but right. you know, very long time they, they are staying in the city, so they have lost the, you know, the, the village. Uh, all the village connections. Mm -hmm. So uh, I asked them to, you know, learn from the uh, Bendre, mm -hmm. all the gestures and you know, posters, how he his posters. Mm -hmm. That will because the mother father is just opposite. Like mother father, mm -hmm. a child a kid learn from a mother father. Right. They are all physical thing and every. But here, uh, yeah, <laughs> just opposite. Yeah. Just opposite. <laughs> Something like that, and uh, in that power dynamics, uh, yeah, uh, as a, you know, I, I'm, uh, I was in the center, but my uh, work is just to facilitate mm. them to, you know, come up with their uh, ideas and their, you know, all the uh, talents mm -hmm. uh, to portray their characters or their uh, work uh, in their respective fields. Mm. Actually, I'm going to ask you both a question, something that you just said that, um, and it occurred to me as you were speaking. Um, first thing first, the, the amount of dialects and languages in that region is a lot, but then I think it's important to highlight, like for a lot of people who don't really think about it, especially if they grew up in North America, just how many languages yeah. there are around the world. Like just in that one small region of Nepal, like, you have uh, over two dozen languages. And I'm from the Caribbean and like each 
country has is very most countries speak English like English is the first language but then you have some that have like Dutch or French um, or even um, Spanish dialects and um, sub sub languages if you could if you would say depending on what region you went I'm from Barbados I our only language is English mm -hmm. and the island is 166 square miles but mm -hmm. Some we have twelve parishes, but mm -hmm. there's always a slight distinction mm -hmm. between the parishes and the dialect in mm -hmm. specific word ways that we we mm -hmm. pronounce certain words mm -hmm. is different. And in this film, um, I think the the language the, one of the first things that, that I really locked onto to was how um, and it was something I never even thought about about how commercialism and capitalism changes the way we speak and changes our language like there's um a scene with um uh, milo where he i'm um, speaking to i think it's uh, one of the men and the man was like we have a tarp and he's like he never seen a tarp but this is a new word okay. that's being introduced into their into their vocabulary you know they have a word for shades now they have a word for coca-cola that's a that's yeah. you know a new word so i want to talk first about language and how you have to basically as performers as actors have to learn a new dialogue uh, for this film because you have to learn how to communicate with the other cast members in a way you didn't have to you have to learn to communicate I, I guess also with your own heritage and your own um, people in a way you never had to so I want to talk with you first because the um, <laughs> the interactions <laughs> between um, Miley is it Miley? Uh, the, Miley, Miley. Miley, Miley, the, Miley the mom and <laughs> Bindre like she has a very kind of like antagonistic communication with him like everything to some people may think that she's um, a bit rougher to him than, my, than um, Miley is and I think a lot of that has to do with she could see her son slipping away she sees him becoming more drawn mm -hmm. to the outside world and she's trying to hold on to him because they lost their daughter so I kind of saw her being rough as a way to like admonish him because she's like I don't want you to keep slipping away so I want you to talk about those scenes with Bandre where she's she seems rough but me I guess being a, a woman it um, I can see where she's like a lot of that comes from from fear. She's afraid for her son. uh, so the way she approached the dialect uh, was uh, a lot similar to what Dr. Nobina had to say. Uh, the child actor that we casted was from the village, so his dialect was very much uh, similar to the one that we were using in the film. So. Uh, uh, a lot of learning for her happened from him uh, as he's, as she uh, kind of as he spent a lot of time with her with her off screen mm -hmm. as she, as we all lived in the same space so uh, she and the kid uh, lived together for the whole duration of the shoot and then they would uh, interact each, with each other off screen as well so that's how she learned the dialect from him mm -hmm. not something so not just that uh, although she belongs to the Rai community uh, she doesn't speak the language mm -hmm. so it was also a lot of influence came from her home mm -hmm. uh, from her mom speaking the language and then uh, a lot of work happened in the pre-production as well with the dialect codes that who taught them how uh, drama how grammar are used in Rai language mm -hmm. as well 
भन्ने खोजेको छ जस्तै नि उहाँले एउटा भन्ने कुरा चाहिँ के भने यदि राई भाषा जसले बोल्छ होइन एउटा टेक्निकल उहाँले सिकाउनु भएको छ उहाँले चाहिँ के भन्नु नेपालीमा भन्दा पहिला सुरुमा त्यो भाषाबाट पहिला उसले सम्झिन्छ क्या त्यो कुरालाई अनि त्यसलाई चाहिँ ठ्याक्कै ट्रान्सलेट गर्दाखेरि चाहिँ भनेको मतलब चाहिँ कस्तो भने जस्तो कुनै पनि कुरा छ त्यहाँनिर गर्ने भने यस्तो क्रिया छ भब छ होइन अनि त्यो पनि सँगै जोडेर हामीले चाहिँ ट्रान्सलेट गर्छ है क्या अनि त्यो कुरालाई गर्दा चाहिँ कनेक्ट गर्दाखेरि चाहिँ अलिकति सजिलो हुन आउँछ भनेर उहाँले सिकाउनु भएको थियो मैले भनेको कुरा बुझे बुझेन मिल्छ जस्तै राई भाषामा चाहिँ त्यहाँनिर चाहिँ नहरू बढी युज हुन्छ नको प्रयोग जस्तो शब्दको कुरा छ होइन वर्णको कुरा छ अनि त्यो सँगै ट्रान्सलेट गर्दाखेरि चाहिँ राई भाषाबाट पनि ट्रान्सलेट गर्दा ठ्याक्कै त्यो भबलाई चाहिँ त्यो भनेको त्यो चिजलाई पनि सँगै नेपालीमा नि जोडेर बोल्ने कोसिस गर्दो रहेछ क्या सिम्पल वर्क लाइक फर एक्जाम्पल डांसर्स एंड बट इन राय वेन दे यूज द भव दे पुट अ को Uh, behind mm-hmm. so when we speak uh, they speak a uh, simple dances mm-hmm. they put that go in dances go so it became a very new you know phrase mm-hmm. uh, you know word itself right. because uh, in nepali it's a dances but because they took uh, from that when they translate the go from their own Right. And that to language and put in uh, dances that made it a dance school so <laughs> it's itself a new right. new word right? yeah and uh, uh, it's a sino uh, tibetan language so uh, no uh, the pronunciations uh, is very different from the usual nepali right. uh, in their uh, uh, native language so when you, they use uh some words here the but they put no there so makes very different so very complicated <laughs> uh, yeah, it's quite complicated <laughs> so this is any camera royal and it's all get the garo pun the malai che but mostly che maile je ekdamai bhanu na किनभने हामी त्यही ठाउँमा गएको हुनाले पनि त्यहाँको मान्छे कति कुरा गर्न भए थियो नि त्यो कुराले चाहिँ धेरै बसिसकेपछि सुन्दा सुन्दा त्यसले चाहिँ एक खालको त्यो हुन्छ नि बानी दिमागलाई गर्छ नि ट्रेन गर्छ नि सो त्यो कुराबाट चाहिँ मलाई चाहिँ एकदम सजिलो भएको थियो किनभने मैले गाउँको मान्छेहरू त्यसपछि बिन्द्र त जहिले पनि मसँगै हुन्थ्यो होइन देमा हुन्थ्यो सो त्यसरी काम गर्दा चाहिँ एज एन एक्टर त्यो क्यारेक्टरको लागि चाहिँ सजिलो भएको थियो सो वी हेड कम टू द लोकेसन फिफ्टिन अर ट्वेन्टी डेज प्रायर टू द सुटिङ सो विच काइन्ड अफ Uh, led me to talk well with the villagers right. also so i also kind of learned from them yeah. mm. and and what about um the relationship of the yeah. mother and son that they're saying like they're very like i they're in, they're really the differences between the relationships is very interesting mm-hmm. to me because like the mom is as i mentioned to me she she converts fear mm-hmm. like she's afraid of her son yeah. um le- lose leaving like her daughter there so how did you work um how did the two of you work on like creating that um the aspect mm-hmm. of the mom because i think she's she's a character that can be easily misunderstood yes yeah. if if people just look at the surface level where people just think oh she's just being rough she's just being on fear you know mm-hmm. she's almost like the good guy compared to the dad who's mm-hmm. like more softer and mm-hmm. he has the yeah. fun side but i think is like she's looking at it from a place of fear whereas for the dad he had kind of put the daughter missing yeah. at the back of his head he didn't want to think about it so he wasn't seeing the connection the same way she did so mm-hmm. i want you to talk about i'm going to ask you about that but i want you to talk about first like creating that aspect of the character so like i to me she hurt me she she broke my heart because i could just see like she was so close to like losing herself but she was just i have to hold on to this my marriage i have to hold on to my son and she other side she could be easily misunderstood yeah mm. yeah uh when we have done the script analysis phase mm-hmm. and we gone through a lot of why she is like that and why uh, mm. uh my life is like that uh we found out as you you know interpreted uh, you know uh, right now that you know why mother is so strict mm-hmm. but if you see the when uh, the father is absent 
then mother becomes more, you know, uh, caring and right. giving and something like that. But when father is around and, you know, she's, she seems more tougher. But as you said, that it triggered by her fear. Mm -hmm. So we found out that in our script analysis. Mm -hmm. So that how we, you know, we, we uh, ask her to play and she also, you know, uh, find out that, okay, my character uh, behaved like this because of that losing, uh, you know, okay. daughter, mm -hmm. and uh, she wants to be more strict so that uh, she can hold on uh, her only child. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. that was the uh, first idea. so the, the first inspiration to uh, towards my approach to the character was uh, that the community that I belong to uh, have a woman in front who women who handle the household works mm -hmm. and then they are the ones in charge of uh, looking to, looking for their sons and so, t towards their children so that was my first inspiration looking in my own community mm -hmm. but then uh, like director Naveen said after that it was a lot of script, script analysis and finding it from there too. Mm. Okay. Is your um for in your culture, is it um, more of a matriarchal society? Yeah, it's matriarchal. Ah, yeah. that explains a lot, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for you, um, for you playing the dad, as I said, like, he's kind of the opposite of the mom, which I was actually surprised by. Um, like he's very soft, but he's also very playful. And um, and the thing about him, he is one. He he's very complex in that you can tell he's struggling with being seen as a man and it's very interesting because there's another film that i saw um that kind of has this whole I, that sh that's kind of showing how the patriarchal societies negatively affect men and we know like men benefit from patriarchy but depending on the personality of the man where he might not necessarily be fully accepting of it but he's kind of still repressed by that because he's trying to fit expectations that he doesn't want to meet mm -hmm. so for you i want to ask you about your of how you perceive patriarchy and how it and how it um in, in informed the way you played um my lady um, because i he at first started out very easygoing he didn't have any pressure mm -hmm. but then his son started demanding more and more and like you went from watch from wanting shades to wanting electricity to wanting a tv and we know it can only escalate from there he he wanted a video game <laughs> you know he yeah, wanted Nike shoes it'll just keep going yeah. and going so i want your inter um how you're on how your your feelings about patriarchy informed your uh, performance Okay, the the अतर <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 
uh, even though she said that uh, uh, also the community that we live in has a female as the leading household mm -hmm. but I feel like now in general uh, it has already gone to the patriarchal society mm -hmm. as well because uh, even in the flame even when Miley suggests something to Myla there are scenes where she suggests something or she uh, gives advice to him Myla mm -hmm. does take the decision himself and then or this was second one the Oh, oh, yeah. And then like you said, uh, it's it was the patriarchy that was kind of pushing him that he needs to fulfill his son's desire. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it's uh, uh, kind of like you said that patriarchy uh, will also feed him the feed him the uh, inferiority complex that led him hit, led him to what the film mm -hmm. unfolds. And also interesting for Azeki on I'm a son of the Doron Gurney, been read to real man. Thorough most of the Doron too. And the Telen will let you pang on the office screen, my son, 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 my क्रिकेट लगे थे क्रिकेट खेलते रावणे उम्मा समय नजीक ना होने मतलब नजीक बनाने को लगे उसले उसले तो जति ऑफिस पेन में क्यों ना स्ट्रगल करें नहीं तेल भी नहीं एक किसी को मालूम थे काम करेगा सर के मतलब उसले ऐसे मतलब नजीक बनाने पर सर मेरा अपना बनाने पर सर नहीं तेल भी नहीं इंटरेस्टिंग काम कर uh, he, he bought him a lot of gifts <laughs> like uh, cricket bats and balls, oh. and he tried to play with him as well. Yeah. But then even though he tried a lot, the, uh, the child actor wouldn't be so close to him. Mm. Rather, he would be so close to the mom. Right. So uh, he, uh, he th that helped him a lot to uh, understand the character and how he approached uh, the two uh, relationship as well. Mm. So it's kind of interesting. So um, the on camera Bindre is loves gifts. He loves all of those things, but the the uh, the, uh, the real actor he did it, so I, and he wanted more of a maternal connection or parental connect uh, connection with you. But I think that's interesting because that's how kids are. You know, kids are very simple about the character of Binger. As I, uh, um, he's uh, as a child, he's very simple. He knows what he wants, but he's very complex in how he goes about yeah. getting what he wants. Yeah. So he, he's a manipulator. Yeah. He knows how to mm. bargain with his parents about asking yeah. for. Say, if you want me to do my homework, mm -hmm. give me this because he knows his education mm -hmm. is very important because I think there's a script on the wall where it says, um, basically it's saying that education is the greatest wealth we can ever have. You know, yeah. without education, you really can't have any okay. true wealth. And he knows that. He understands that yeah. inherently, yeah. but he doesn't understand the consequences. So talk about building the story around a little boy who's very simple in his wants, but very complex in how he goes about getting what he wants. Yeah. Uh uh, yeah, we, we want to say in layers, like a, like a innocency mm -hmm. and how mod modernity comes and how the innocency goes away and how the innocency goes away, then it becomes more, you know, uh, like a, it's kind of corrupt. Mm -hmm. So uh, that uh, we try to portray with the Bendri, you know, mm -hmm. that, that idea, idea was there before, before and, you know, uh, yeah, when we cast it, uh, during the casting process, we selected uh, at least four, five, uh, you know, kids to play the role, and our casting director was interested more on another. Mm. Uh, he is more, you know, a very simple guy, or something very shy nature, and Benre uh, Prasan uh, uh, is a very uh, playful, you know, mm. uh, uh, in the village. Uh, I found out that he knows every dog, you know. Mm. When uh, and uh, mm -hmm. there is a, there was a small town, mm -hmm. some shops were there, and you know he was playing there alone and with the dogs, you know, mm -hmm. around him, and you know, and quite stubborn. Like uh, sometimes he he will be very like uh, you know, okay. Uh, when we were shooting, uh, we're taking the swords, and he will say. Uh, that was a seven take or eight take. Then he would say, "Okay, this is the last one. You know, <laughs> and I'm not going to give you another take." So that thing was there before, mm. even d during the casting. So we thought he will portray. You know, yeah, yeah we'll have that naughtiness uh, is there. So uh, we cast, mm -hmm. we casted him. So it, it helped our 
cloth and uh, another thing is that uh, there are a lot of children and you know the uh, the uh, not only the, uh, as you said, the, when we started this interview, the power play mm -hmm. was there between them also. Right. So we tried to <coughs> little bit play with it also. So like uh, when he used to be more strong, and we we'll, we say, okay, now we'll ca uh, you're not going to play this role. Uh, right. We'll cast some some right. other and. He will be very obedient. Then again, ah, you play with too. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, that helped us a lot, and uh, he's very, uh, you know, very brilliant and very sharp uh, kid. Mm -hmm. So he learned the very fast, and uh, within 15 or 20 days, we have a difficulty working with him. But after that, uh, he was so, you know, spontaneous, and you know. So uh, into the character that sometimes you know, mother and father have to mm. deal with it. You know, <laughs> they are professional actors, but you know, <laughs> yeah. they have to compete with the you know uh, Vendre. So it was quite an interesting uh, process itself for us to right. learn how to work with the children. Right, and yeah. the, like in talking about the power dynamics, the thing about people always think only adults are yeah. crave power, but kids mm -hmm. crave power too because yes, yes. they like. I'm very, I think he has, um, he exemplifies it very well where he realizes how um, powerful power is. Yeah. You know, how having access to right. something gives him power, gives him hierarchy, gives yeah. him social status. Yeah. Even in the kids, because it's like a microcosm, you know, a school is like a microcosm of a society. Yeah. You have like, you have the leader who's like, if I have the coke, the, yeah. using a bottle of coke, I was just like, I'm like, first and first, coke is not even the best one. I think Pepsi is better. But, <laughs> but you know, he's like, he's like, I have the co I have the bottle of Coca Cola. If you follow me, yeah. I'll give you this because it's like, uh, it's like gold to these kids. You know, yeah. they're like, it's sweet, it's it's it's, yeah. it's bubbly. They saw it on TV, so that is a status symbol. Mm. So I thought it was brilliant how you have the kids looking and say okay i know this person has power this person has something that i want so i have to follow it and then you switch it up with the with using um the picture um a matriarchal society where the little girl um i think it's taste and taya, taya she yeah. was like well you don't want me to be in your clique mm -hmm. because i'm a I'm girls because he starts to separate by yeah. gender but then she was like i have something that all of you want so if you want this follow me so i want to ask you about giving the female characters so mm -hmm. much say in the film talking with the mama then having the little girl um taya um and even the grandmother like she was she had power too over the dad because she was like i have this thing that you want so talk about giving the female characters their own um their own power within this within the story it seems it's very subtle but it's there yeah yeah, yeah. i think that come from our uh you know uh, subconscious uh, because I, I belong to not community mm -hmm. it's not we are very close with the Thai community and our uh, you know uh, community also magical mm -hmm. so lot lot of you know household works or you know the decision making process is done by our mothers and obviously maybe uh, in my uh, my family too my mother is the uh, in center, you know, uh, whatever she decides, we just obey as a children. So that thing was there maybe, so it came out like that. And other thing is that uh, consciously I say that, you know, uh, yeah, uh, you know, because there's just some problem uh, uh, our society is facing mm -hmm. like uh, as you say the patriarchy is there and there are other other power dynamics is playing like a class is there and you know a lot of things are there but you know uh, to create a humanity uh, I think we, we should uh, be more uh, uh, open to the right. diverse ideas the diverse diverse thoughts so if you look at my uh, previous films too, uh, mother are always there and the uh, women are in the center. Right. So that also there 
because of it, I think. Mm. Uh, Minso, uh, you're sitting quite by. I actually have a question for you because the interesting thing about this film, it also talks, as I mentioned, power dynamics and capitalism, but it talks about the generation gap between old and young. You know, and I want to ask you as a younger person, um, because I can see Binge Ray, like, for me, would be like, I grew up in the generation of learning about the World Wide Web. I was there when when the internet went live. I was there when the first cell phones became, I'm old, I'm dating myself, but I'm 40, so I was there when all of that happened. And um, now we have the Generation Z, is it Generation yeah, yeah. Z? Like, there, there's a disconnect where like they don't appreciate not being able to have internet. You know, yeah. they don't appreciate the struggle of having to use a phone booth <laughs> to make the phone call. So for you, I want to ask because Bendre is a representation of that. He's he's very caught up in the new. He, he's very caught up in the flashy. You know, the, the the TV and all of this. But he's also, I think, representing how. Um, capitalism takes especially people from indigenous communities away from their communities you know creates that separation from appreciation of culture and respect to our elders yeah. you know like he doesn't have any he didn't have any respect for his yeah. father and the elders at all and i think a lot of that has to do with capitalism and how especially westernization takes away from the appreciation of um indigenous and cultural um uh respect and beliefs. I want to ask you about your interpretation of the film and how you saw um, maybe perhaps maybe even not seeing yourself in Midway but perhaps people that you knew in a character like that. I'm, I'm so sorry. I got so caught off guard. I know the noise. I know because I surprised you with asking. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Take your time to think about it. Maybe can you repeat? Um, yeah. Uh, what did, how did you know. interpret the film as a younger person uh, um, from from um, from your coming from your community and how has not only seeing the film made you think perhaps about capitalism mm -hmm. but also westernization and how westernization um, pulls young people away from their cultures and appreciating cultural um, uh, traditions you know like he doesn't respect the traditions and like when he cut up the film mm -hmm. the the negative I was upset because I was like, negatives are valuable now. Yeah. Like, yeah. negatives cost money. He does, but he doesn't see the value in a negative. You know, he doesn't see also the value to the parents because it was a picture of their daughter. It was a negative of a picture of thing, but he doesn't value that. He doesn't value. He he thinks, for instance, using the TV as an example, he sees like the flat screen TV and he sees that as being valuable, but he doesn't understand the value of an actual negative itself. Those things cost money now. Mm -hmm. You know, so I want your perspective, your your pers um, perspective on the film, mm -hmm. and possibly on Westernization and how it pulls on people away from their cultures. Yeah. Okay. So I was involved in the project from the way, not from the very beginning, mm -hmm. but I was involved in the project from pre-production. Oh, so I didn't I, even know. Yeah, I, I was initially I initially joined as assistant director, mm -hmm. but then I started handling the production side. So I kind of knew what uh, Naveen, director Naveen was trying to do with the film and oh, okay. what the initial idea of the script was so uh, I d definitely resonated with the uh, film's idea of having uh, trying to find your own identity in the midst of globalization mm -hmm. and uh, kind of preserving the culture as well and uh, like like you said from if, if I have to look, say it from a younger side it's definitely uh, the other side is much more appealing and pleasing but then uh, younger generation ha also have to be educated about their roots mm -hmm. and then that's something uh, that the film kind of uh, also uh, tries to talk about that younger generation uh, needs to be uh, educated about their roots or their culture from household and then not just how the household it's all it also needs to go uh, outside the household as well so uh, I guess I I do agree that uh, I guess uh, I don't know what else to say about it. Uh, <laughs> that's it, I guess. <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah, I think the film, it, like, you managed to pack so much, um, mm -hmm. I think, so many layers into the film because, and I think, for, as I said at the beginning, coming from being an immigrant myself, um, like, watching Canadian films on TV when I was younger, um, we, I had this idea of what Canada would be like. Yeah. You know, I had this this perception of Canada being perfect you know there's a saying that we have um, the grass is always greener on the other side you know we think that everything is perfect on the other side not many people dye their grass like it's fake 
but and then when I moved here I learned the reality of what Canada is you know like you I have race there's racism sexism mm -hmm. and then there's like how in talking about how indigenous people are treated like the first nations people are so um, disenfranchised and all of this and and the film touches I think on that it doesn't really talk it doesn't really talk about immigration explicitly but there's a character who moved away who moved out to work abroad and he came back and he said I, I don't want to go because he's like I miss home you know I miss um, I miss the um, the millet wine you know it's the yeah. simple things and and I think for a lot of people like as the world I always say as the world is progressing we're regressing mm -hmm. you know we, we technology brings so much advancements but it also takes away so much from us mm -hmm. and the film does explicitly say that especially I think for for the dad like, it takes so much away from him like we talked about it took his um, self-confidence away you know like yeah. he like trying to meet these demands he's feeling more insecure about as a person and I want you so I want each of you to talk about how um, making this film helped you to maybe appreciate your culture more and perhaps appreciate your culture traditions more because I think making films like this is very important because it helps us to realize <laughs> the grass is not always greener on the oh, other side yeah. and that with progression comes cost there's always a cost and it's always a personal cost there's a personal cost to everyone like moving to Canada I had no idea how much I would miss the ocean I miss the beach every day mm -hmm. you know and I never thought about that when I when I thought about moving here you know I thought I would be fine but I, I've been here 16 years and every day I look out my window because we live on the 17th floor of our mm -hmm. building and all I see is land mm -hmm. but back home if I had been home I would be seeing ocean so like, I still every day get up and I still like I miss the beach so that for me is a personal cause so, so for each of you I want to talk about your perspectives on how this film helped you appreciate um, your culture and maybe think about it in a way you hadn't thought about it before there so when Pocketman, <laughs> You thought Emily is a So, uh, even though he was brought up, uh, born and raised in his village, he moved uh, to the city and then has been in city for a very long while now, and then only goes back to his village when there's uh, some ritual or something, uh, some work. Mm -hmm. uh, so while working on this film and then uh, uh, working on the strip analysis for the character's philosophy and uh, uh, cultural aspect, he ha had the opportunity to revisit his childhood all over again. Mm -hmm. Just been raised to I was born in the city. I was born in the city. I was born in the city. I was born in the uh, so even though he played the Myla character, he re resonated a lot with the Bindre character as well because uh, he kind he feels like he was uh, like Bindre sometime, uh, some some time ago. So he was like uh, he was like how Bindre is uh, trying uh, again trying for electricity, trying uh, uh, trying for tr trying to go to the city and then getting lost over there. And then uh, he, uh, while visiting with Bindre, he also kind of missed his father a lot. 
अनि अर्को त त्यो त पक्कै नै हो मैले मेरो आफ्नो मूल्य मान्यता जति मेरो कल्चर अथवा मेरो सोसाइटीमा हुने जति त्यसको के भन्छ त त्यो जति इम्पोर्टेन्ट थियो त्यो चिज चाहिँ नि फिल्म गरिरहँदा धेरै कुराहरूले चाहिँ अझै महत्त्वको साथ बुझेँ सो लाइक यू सेट वाइल्ड वर्किङ अन द फिल्म ही अन्डरस्टुड अ लट ही अन्डरस्टुड एन्ड अबाउट द इम्पोर्टेन्स अफ हिज कल्चर एन्ड देन एभ्रिथिङ the culture and every aspect of like you're talking about mm. and for you there yeah, uh, every year he goes to his village to mm. perform a ritual mm. so uh, if he doesn't perform that ritual uh, he have some problem mm -hmm. you know, that physical problem or other problems also so you know uh, he's very rooted to uh, indigenity so belonging you know to go back and you know uh, worship the uh, Nature. 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 And, and the ancestors. Mm -hmm. so. mm. <coughs> yeah, uh, there's a, uh, we try to like uh, put a lot of players, as you say, that, you know, if you look at uh, craft-wise also, uh, we don't use, because the right people say that there is no hierarchy in their right. community. So, uh, because the uh, film, Uh, gender also so <coughs> so uh, but in film you know uh, if you go little bit go up the camera it will mean different thing mm -hmm. if you go little down so where uh, to find out that the how uh, we can say that their philosophy in the craft it was quite challenging and we use that if you look at the inside the family we mostly use uh, camera angles uh, parallel uh, parallel to their eyes mm -hmm. not going up or not going right. down and they also say that they are very down to not uh, or mm -hmm. nature so we try to you know we didn't use when inside the house we we stayed with them down to the earth the camera right yeah uh, most of the time the camera uh, uh, was in the floor mm. because uh, they say that we are the uh, you know son and daughters of the earth right so that way we try to convey it and uh, like a, we are very harmonious and giving a space uh, like a uh, in, in, in all indigenous people say that you know uh, we share the earth right mm -hmm. and everybody have a space uh, not uh, this is mine not that, that's yours the thought is not there so uh, to portray that you know we have to uh, to create the harmony we try to always in a flow right. not static you know uh, in a flow try try that to bring that feelings or that, that philosophy with that and For me also, you know, uh, basically, you know, uh, I do more uh, films on indigenous people, like uh, uh, my previous one, Numahum, uh, it was on my own community, mm. it talks about, uh, about the freedom of a woman, and, you know, it talks a lot about the indigenous culture, and uh, this one also. So, <coughs> yeah, a uh, lot of players, like, uh, I found out, uh, as you say, that the uh, slogan written in the, you know, on the school wall. Uh, yeah, school wall. Uh, like, uh, and uh, if you look at all the, uh, if you look at when the, that goes to the uh, window, and you see most of the window are parallel. You know, mm -hmm. the rod will be a parallel, but use we use instead of, you know, down like a jail, you know, and. Uh, You know, our, you know, the education system use uh, this as a tool to make or, you know, obedient citizens, mm -hmm. like, a, uh, uh, so, uh, so th those, lot of elements uh, we try to portray there and uh, for me also because I'm very, you know, sometimes as a filmmaker, you know, uh, uh, 
I questions myself. Uh, what is my you know voice? Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, uh, uh, to create more immunity right. is my goal uh, or my art. So how can I get there? Uh, if I, you know, uh, deal these subjects uh, very uh, in depth mm -hmm. and uh, uh, multi layer, not uh, staying in one side. Mm -hmm. Like I'm an indigenous, so my indigenousness uh, is uh, greater than the others. If I start to say that, then you know that what. Uh, what uh, the world is facing right now, mm. the problem okay. that came, uh, came from, you know, you're trying to make others as you are. Yeah. You know, that's the problem. Okay. So here also you see the road is there, but I try to, uh, you know, there's a possibility also, that's a hope also, but the road also brings a despair, right? Mm. So we try to balance it it's not uh, only one thing right yeah uh, this uh, film gave me those you know uh, you know perspective mm. made my perspective more clear okay Okay, um, we have to wrap up now, but thank you so much all for you yeah. for joining me to talk about the film, A Road to a Village. Um, I hope you have a great festival season and enjoy your time here in Toronto. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.